In this lesson, we'll go over how to measure, how to determine the rate of reaction using a calculation. We already discussed in previous videos that a reaction rate tells us how fast or how slow a reaction is taking place, how quickly we are using up the reactants, which as you know is on the left hand side of the arrow in a chemical equation, or how quickly we are forming the products. And it's very important to note that rate, whenever you see rate of reaction, when I say rate it means I am dividing by time. So this is the definition for reaction rate according to your exam guidelines. You need to be able to define reaction rate as the change in concentration of reactants or products per unit time. So if I ask you to calculate the average rate of reaction, I'm just going to call it rate over here. They can say average rate, they can say rate of reaction. According to the definition, rate is calculated as taking the change in concentration of reactants or products per unit time per means divide per unit time, dividing by time. And that is essentially, according to the definition, how we calculate rates. However, you do need to be aware if I am using reactants to calculate rate of reaction, because remember, rate of reaction is how quickly are we using up the reactants? So remember, we start off with a certain amount, then we use it up. So rate of reaction is how quickly are we using up those reactants or how quickly are we forming, are we making those products? So we can choose, either we can do an experiment to determine the rates of reaction using the reactants. If we do that, if we use the reactants, then, and we calculate the rates of reaction, we need to put a minus in front of our fraction over here. And the reason for that is because reactants are used up and a rate can never be negative. And to avoid this negative, we put a negative in front of the fraction, but this is only when you are dealing with reactants. If you are dealing with products, you do not put a minus, a negative in front of the fraction. You just keep it a positive fraction, but you can see that the little formula is the same. Now, that is the formula if you are dealing with concentration. So I've gone through the different reaction rate graphs in another video in this playlist, but this one over here deals with concentration. So if I had to give you a graph dealing with concentration, I had to give you certain values that are corresponding to certain points on the graph. Like let's say I say that that is 40 moles per cubic decimeter, and let's say this is obviously zero, and let's say that the reaction takes 30 seconds, then because my y-axis says concentration over here, to calculate the rate of reaction, I'll, I will use change in concentration over change in time. However, how we calculate the rate of the reaction depends on whether we are using concentration, which is why we have concentration in the numerator, or we can have mass, or we can have volume, that will change the numerator of my fraction. So again, if we are using concentration, so focus on this top little piece over here, what is your unit for concentration? It's mole per cubic decimeter. Take note that this is a negative three. If you accidentally write it as a positive three, you do not get your answer mark. Okay, so that's the unit for concentration. The unit for time is seconds. We measure time in seconds in chemistry. So if I was, had to ask you for the unit of rate, what is the what is rate measured in? What is, it, what is its unit? Well, at the top of the fraction, I've got mole per cubic decimeter. At the bottom of the fraction, I have seconds. If I take the seconds to the top of the fraction, remember seconds here is a power of one. If I take that to the top of the fraction, I hope if you put your math brain on, I hope you agree that my unit will then be moles per cubic decimeter per second. You see this, the S power of one becomes power of negative one because I'm moving it to the top of the fraction. So this is if I'm using concentration. But what if I use mass, you know, measuring mass and what is mass measured in? Mass is measured in grams. Time is measured in seconds. So my unit is therefore grams per second. As soon as we say per, it's to the negative one. Another way of writing this is like this. Okay, grams per second. But this is the more traditional way of writing it. What about if I use volume? Now remember, volume can be measured in cubic centimeters, cubic decimeters, cubic meters. We usually do cubic decimeters in chemistry. Time in seconds, so my unit will be cubic decimeters per second. What about moles? Obviously, my moles are measured in mole, time is measured in seconds, so my unit will be moles per second, mole per second, just like that. So be careful of the unit. It really can tell you what you need to be working with in your calculation. So over here, according to the definition, changing concentration of reactants or products per unit time, again, taking notes 
of that unit. And just remember, reaction rate cannot be negative. So if you're using reactants, there must be a minus over here. If you're using products, no need for a minus. And something that people forget about is that, can you see at the top here, say we're using the change in mass. Okay, we're working with mass. What does change mean? Change, the triangle, delta, change means final. So mass final minus mass initial Change always means minus. You take your final minus your initial time. You take your time final minus your time initial. So if I had to ask you to try this example, pause the screen, try it yourself, and then I'll do it with you. An excess of dilute hydrochloric acid, so this one is an excess, is used to dissolve pieces of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and they give me the balanced equation, just like that. So as you can see, these are the reactants and everything on the other side of the equation are the products. The following results were obtained. What they've done is they have the total mass of beaker with its contents. Now, can you see we are working with mass, mass of beaker with its contents. Now, um, this is a snippet from a question paper, but essentially what is happening in this question is we're starting off with a little beaker. We then have HCl aqueous, HCl, an acid, and we have little pieces, solid pieces of calcium carbonate, which will be then dissolved in the HCl. And you can see that we're going to be making the following products, one of them being a gas. And the gas will escape from the beaker. And what ends up happening then is it causes the mass of the beaker to decrease as the reaction goes on. I do have a video in this playlist that goes over the different ways, experiments in which we can measure the rates of reaction. This is one of them. But in this question, we're going to focus on calculating the average rate of reaction for the first 40 seconds of the reaction. What I want you to take note of in this table is at time zero seconds, so when the reaction started, the total mass of the beaker with its contents was 350 grams. Sorry, there should be a grams in brackets over there. Then after 10 seconds, it went to 310, then 280, then 260, then 250. And take a look at what happened again at 50 seconds. It stayed 250. So what does that mean? That means that at 40 seconds, the reaction reached completion. The reaction was finished after 40 seconds because the total mass of the beaker remained constant. But they're very specific in the question anyways. They want the average rate of reaction for the first 40 seconds of the reaction because we are dealing with mass. Because we're dealing with mass, we are going to have change in mass over change in time. And now, are we dealing with reactants in this table or is this showing me products that are being produced? Well, I hope it's clear based on the write-up and based on my explanation that what is shown in this table is mass of the beaker with its contents. These are the contents of the beaker, the reactants, which are getting used up. Do you see how the reactants are decreasing? They're getting used up. Because we are working with reactants, remember, we need to put a minus in front of my fraction just like that. Then keep the minus there. We need for the first 40 seconds of the reaction. So this is my first data point. And this is my second data point. So what was my final mass? Remember we do final mass minus initial mass. My final mass was 250. My initial mass was 350. And can you see, see if you say 250 minus 350, you're going to get a negative number. That's why we put the minus there in front of the fraction. Then we have 40. It's my final time minus zero. My initial time. It is actually important to put this in brackets like this because you're making the whole fraction negative. And I get two comma five zero. Now remember your units because we're dealing with mass in grams, time in seconds, grams per second. And there we go. As you can see, this negative basically canceled out the negative that would arise from the numerator in this over here in this fraction. Okay, here is another way that we can present information and require you to calculate a rate of reaction. Now, this graph actually shows two separate reactions taking place. Reaction A, represented by graph A, and then reaction B, represented by graph B. Based on the graph video that I did with you in this playlist, think about, in your head, think about which reaction has a higher rate of reaction. Keep Hold on to that answer, and we're going to confirm that by doing a calculation. So which reaction, A, 
or B? Which one has a higher rate of reaction? And now let's calculate. Calculate the rates of reaction for experiment A and B. Oxygen gas is being produced as a product in this experiment. And even if they didn't tell me that it's being produced as a product, how would I know that based on the graph? Well, at time zero, we start off with nothing. And remember, when we have a reaction, we have reactants, we have products. At the beginning of a reaction, we don't have any products. Nothing has been made yet. It's like when you have ingredients and you're going, you're going to make a cake, you have all the ingredients, all the reactants, but you don't have a cake yet. The cake is the product. Okay, so we start off with no, no product, which means that this is clearly showing oxygen as being a product. So calculating the rates, the average rate of reaction for A, Remember, we are now dealing with volume. Read your y-axis. Volume in cubic decimeters. So it's change in volume over change in time. Now, we want for the duration of the entire experiment. So the experiment started over here at zero seconds. Think of that as a coordinate, zero, zero. And when did graph A finish? When did the experiment finish? I hope you can see that at 60 seconds. So read on your graph. That corresponds, if you read down, to 60 seconds. So on the x-axis, it's 60. After 60 seconds, the volume of oxygen gas was 60 cubic decimeters, and it stayed constant. So can you see, for graph A, at 60 seconds, we have 60 cubic decimeters of volume. After 80 seconds, we have the same volume. After 100 seconds, we have the same volume. The graph becomes horizontal, like that which means the reaction has reached completion. The reaction is finished after 60 seconds. So what was your final volume? 60 minus what was your initial volume? Zero. What was your final time? 60 seconds. What was your initial time? Zero. 60 divided by 60 is one. What are your unit for rate? Cubic decimeters per second. My time is measured in seconds. Please, please just remind yourself that change in volume means final volume minus initial volume. Change in time is final time minus initial time. Even if your initials and your finals are zeros, you must include them, please. Okay, so that's the rate for A. What about B? What about B's rates? Well, we're going to use the same formula, change in volume over change in time. But now let's switch up our colors over here. How long does it take for B's reaction to complete? Can you see that after 60 seconds, the curve is still increasing? It's still increasing. It's still increasing. Only after 120 seconds does the curve start to flatten out. So over here, over here. So they start at the same place, 0, 0. But the final time for B is 120. It's double the time. Okay. Double the time. It took double the time to finish the reaction for B. And its final volume is the same. 60. Okay, interesting. So let's see what happens here. What was my, remember, change in volume? What is your final volume for B? Your final volume. It's the same final volume. Remember, read off your y-axis. 60. Your initial volume for B is 0. But your time is different. Your final time for B is 120 minus your initial time is zero. What is 60 divided by 120? Let's carry on up here. 60 divided by 120 is a half. So 0, 0,50 cubic decimeters per second. Now, based on that, which reaction has a higher rate of reaction? We've got one cubic decimeter versus 0, 0,5. Reaction A definitely has a higher rate of reaction. And what's interesting to note is because they produce the same final volume, we can look at the time. Reaction A took half the time that reaction B took, which means that reaction A was twice as fast as reaction B. I hope that's interesting for you to see. And also take a note at the curves. Remember, we said in the graph video that reaction A, or the steeper the gradient, you can see that graph A is much steeper, the higher the rate of reaction. I hope that this video on calculating the rate of reaction has been helpful for you. Hopefully you can apply it in all your application questions. I'll be doing some of those in this playlist. I'll see you in another video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye everyone. Love you all.